Hey folks, today we're going to take a quick look at uh, extruding polygons in 3D or 2.5D if you're grrr about that sort of thing. With Mapbox GLJS, it is really easy, which I'm not supposed to say anymore. I think there's that saying things are easy is an anti-pattern because it's not easy for everyone and and you're making people feel stupid but it's not very hard I'll put it that way there's really only two styling attributes you have to worry about in your in your style file for your vectors there's a fill extrude height and a fill extrude base and you set those and off you go I recently enabled this for our quality of life project for our embed map just because I thought it was super cool uh, so if you Past the embed map, this pitch equals true argument, you can now do pitching. If you get past about, I think I said it at 20 or 25 degree bearing, you will get this 3D extrusion. And if you go under that, everything will flatten back out. Ah, <laughs> neat. 3D stuff is in GIS sometimes the value of it beyond a wow factor is negligible sometimes you go wow but you look at it and you know well i really didn't learn anything here i i couldn't see before nothing's really all that different it's just kind of wow in this case i think it actually is useful for for this kind of use if you look straight on at a choropleth map like the this that is using jenks breaks one all the breaks in a or all the values in a certain quantile are indistinguishable so all these might as well be the same value as you're looking at the map and patterns particularly when you're looking at polygons of different shapes and sizes and a lot of them are tough to see but when i pitch this down one things in the same quantile you can actually tell differences between them and two you can see patterns a lot better like if you look at it flat Go back here, flatten, flatten. Ah. Thank you. I'm using a trackball, so it's, it's a little weird. You can kind of see here a lower household income band around this way, sorta, if you're looking close. When you knock it out this way, it becomes very apparent where that band is. You can see there's this this giant valley of uh, our house needs more cash uh, around the Mecklenburg County area. And in this 3D view, it's a lot more apparent. So I think it really does have value in something like this. So how do you do it? Uh, code, code, code. There are only two properties you need to set for your polygon. You set, go back down where I'm adding this. You set a fill extrude base and your paint property of zero. That's where you want things to start out. And then up here in this rotate event, if we get past 25 degrees, I take that layer and I set the fill extrude height property to type identity and property height. And height is an attribute I have on this vector data. And that's it. It'll go flying up in the air. And I'm setting a couple here because I have the highlight layer for this selected thing as well. What I'm doing there, you can only extrude uh, fill types or polygons at this point. When I have things flat, I do an outline of that polygon so you can still see the, the choropleth value for that. But I can't do that line feature. I can't pull it up in the air. So when I pull it up in the air, I, I take this polygon feature, which is also always being drawn, and I just set the opacity away from zero so you can see it. And then I flatten back out, set the opacity back to zero, and you just see the outline. That's all this is doing. By the way, there's a map pitch event. That doesn't fire in this case. What's firing is the rotate event. So that's what you need to watch for. Watch for rotate. When it gets above 25 degrees, shoot things up in the air. 
and if it's not above 25 degrees flatten things back out it is that not hard to to get these things going in terms of thinking about the height value you want to set uh, quality of life has 82 variables and they range it could be a number that ranges from 0 to 3 or it could be like this where the county value the selected value is 91,000 the county value is 56 you might have polygons that are like 36,000 what you want to do for setting a height since it's not a real height is normalize that figure out the highest value you want to see and I picked 5,000 for, for already it looked about right then when I go to set the, the height attribute on the vector layer, which in this case is GeoJSON, when I load that, I take the maximum value I have for that metric, and I set 5,000 as the real height I want to show. I divide 5,000 by that max value, and it gives me a height factor to set things to. Then I just multiply the actual value by that height factor and the maximum value will now be 5,000 and everything else will be scaled along those lines. So that way you won't have some things for this kind of data where everything's flat and some things where all of a sudden you're in the Himalayas. So you factor out the height. Another thing to think about is the whole control click drag around is uh, no normal person is going to go to your site and go, hey, I wonder what would happen if I held down my control button and clicked there and dragged around a bit on this map. No one really thinks like that. So if it's an important enough feature that you want somebody besides a GIS expert to, or a, a web mapping aficionado to get, you need to put a button somewhere and give people a reasonable pitch so for Mecklenburg County, actually, because it's it's longer up and down in the kind of data patterns we see, it, it looks a little bit better if it's not due north. So I rotated a bit and set a pitch that kind of looks okay for this data. That's what I do. And then you can click that again. It'll orient back north and flatten everything out. If you want people beyond you and your... your uh, you know, circle of GIS nerds to, to actually pitch, you need to have it in some other event and you need to give them a default value so they don't just uh, murder themselves. Hey, right. that's how not hard that is. It's uh, really cool. And for a use case like this, it actually provides a lot of value. I can see patterns in the data when it's pitched that I don't see when it's flat. Or at least those patterns are easier to see when it's pitched. So, hello kitty. I don't know if you heard that or not. I'm being assaulted by a cat. All right, folks. I think that's all I had to say. Uh, it's it's really not hard to do. And you, people are doing really, really cool stuff. A lot cooler stuff than this. So look at your Twitter feed and you'll see people are doing really neat stuff with this. Go out and do the same. I'll get you later. Bye-bye.